So I typically spend about 25 to 30 hours making shoes. Not all of that is here. Um, generally I spend my Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday nights in here for about three hours. And then Saturdays and Sundays I spend, I don't know, it depends on the weekend, a few hours a day probably working in here too. Um, so now I've got most of my pattern pieces finished up, cutting little holes in them so I can get a pen into these grooves. This is the lasting allowance. This is what I'm gonna pull over the last and under to nail it in place. So yeah, just making those little cuts. Um, so I'm working on the fifth sample now and I'm hoping after the sixth or so, I'll be ready to start selling them. And I can already tell that there are some things I wanna change for doing the sixth. And maybe for the sixth sample, I won't do a pair of shoes. I'll just do a half pair. And that way I can sort of iron out problems without having to go through the entire process again. I guarantee you when, when I do the sixth sample, I'll find something that I'll want to make better again. So today, now that I've got all my upper pieces cut out, I'm working on cutting out the lining now, but now that the upper's all cut out, I can go ahead and start preparing all the edges and seams and everything like that. So it's going to be a lot of skiving today as well as edge finishing. So skiving is when you take a piece of leather like this and you put it through the machine, which is basically just a big spinning knife. What it does is it kind of shaves the leather down so that way when you're doing like one piece on top of the other, it doesn't bunch up and look twice as thick. So essentially you cut the thickness in half or so, so that way when you're putting everything together, there's no big lumps sitting around the shoe. So now that we have all of our pieces cut out and prepped and ready to go, um, we're going to start sewing. And I've already finished the linings, pretty basic stitching, and the tongues. So now we're going to do the upper, and that's where the fun begins. Within the past, I don't know, six months to a year, I like really drilled down and actually like started organizing um, and really tried to make this a business. So I don't, I don't know what the catalyst was, but I just kind of like got myself organized, sat down at the computer, started typing out ideas, that sort of stuff. And, and here we are almost there. <laughs> Small shoemaking businesses pretty much just are not a thing anymore. And if you want to buy sh components, then you need to make like 300 pairs of shoes. And that's really dif difficult when you're looking for soles because I'm very particular about what kind of soles I want to use. So that's been one of the big things that's been holding me back from releasing you know, this pair, this line of shoes. But I, I think I've got some outlets that I can look into to sort of find what I'm looking for. So today we're gonna keep working on the upper and hopefully, hopefully we'll have a finish by the day. But we'll see. So the name Porter Footwear comes from, um, my grandparents have a little lake house up in Maine, up on Porter Lake. I spent like one to two weeks every summer since I was born there, so it's got a, holds a really special place in my heart. So I figured what better way to pay homage than name my brand after it. My grandfather's favorite shoe, he, whenever you see him walking around, he always had a pair of Cortezes on. And so I made a pair for my dad and I made a little, um, like leather stamp of him, uh, an old picture of him playing baseball back in like 50s probably. So like a silhouette stamp of him playing baseball. And that was, I put that on the tongue tag. So I was like a little, nice little, you know, little, I don't know, piece of the Christmas present, yeah. This is definitely my passion. Between the amount of time I spent 
actually doing it and the amount of time I spend thinking about it, 100% is my passion. Um, so today we're going to be working on the upper still, stitching that all together. Maybe we'll get to lasting today, we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, I've made up these toe puffs and heel counters, which give the structure to the shoe, and now I'm just trimming them down and making sure they fit properly. It would be awesome to do it full time. Um, I think right now I've just got to start building my brand and building a following, and getting people interested in what I have to offer. Um, maybe then I'll do it full time further down the line, but it all depends on, you know, if people want it, of course. If people don't want to buy your product, then you can't do it. <laughs> so I think if I do it part time now, get people interested and wanting a pair of shoes from me, then maybe further down the line that'll happen. I, I'm not where I would like to be in order to sell shoes yet, but I think we're close. So I've got the uppers mostly finished. I've just got to make and attach the tongues now. So that's what we're working on. And then we'll get to lasting. I feel like I've said that for the past like three days. And then we'll get to lasting. And it just has not happened. a perfectionist but if I don't think a shoe a pair of shoes are up to like my level of quality that I want to get it at then I don't want to sell them and I just don't think I'm there yet with my shoes um, but yeah I don't know I probably should just take the plunge and sort of offer stuff and see what happens and kind of work from that rather than just pushing it off and being like, well, maybe next time the shoe will be better and I can do it that way, but I don't know. So today we're finishing up. I've got my lining lasted and yeah, we're gonna last it and put the sole on. If this doesn't work out, then to me, that'll be a pretty tough blow because I've spent so much time building this and if people just aren't interested in that then maybe I don't know maybe it's not for me which would suck but I'd, I'd probably still do it but in a different capacity like maybe not make um, like a line of shoes but maybe keep just making concepts that will get people interested because um, there's a lot of different aspects to shoe making that I enjoy and it's not necessarily always making the same shoe all the time for people. Maybe it's just making a one-off pair of concepts here and there that, that can kind of build up a, a design portfolio, so to speak. Because um, there's a, a couple different ways to go about like making a living with shoemaking. It's a... Uh, I could do it, you know, here by myself making my own brand or I could join you know there's other companies that make shoes that I could do that for them too um, but it's just I guess figuring out what works for me and what is fulfilling for me I guess but yeah there's not really a part I don't enjoy like there's some stuff that's tedious about it that's maybe not that fun but you know, when you can build something and put it all together and it's actually like functional and you can do something with it, that's pretty cool.